All right, everybody, welcome. This is the Crypto Mastery class here. Big day today, a major sell-off in Bitcoin and crypto. So we're going to dive right into everything here. And uh, so you guys, uh, we're going to unpack some news here. We will go over the charts here. I've got these queued up. And my the TLDR on this is do we go, does Bitcoin go higher or lower from here? Looking very bearish on this weekly time frame, big bearish engulfing candle. Uh, I am concerned. I am concerned here that we drift lower. Uh, this is the setup that we don't want to see. Bearish early reversal indicator here and a TSI also red and the RSI Pro, uh, which are part of our new Pro Suite. And um, we'll talk about how you can get your hand, hands on these as well. But this red circle here, typically marks uh, these market tops. And so I was just on a very interesting call with a cycle trader. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to be doing some more work with this person. But um, he said that according to his cycle theory, which I wish we had talked last week, he said that uh, he had a high on Bitcoin right back here. I think it was, see, this is a monthly chart. Stay with me there. It was right around May 11th, he said, which would have been, uh, I'm sorry, uh, in May, right back in here. So guys, it's looking very ominous here. Kind of depends, a lot depends on the CPI. Of course, we have CPI numbers tomorrow and uh, we just don't know how that's going to come in. And then of course, the FOMC tomorrow afternoon. So, um, you know, these markets are tricky. It's uh, very much news driven nowadays. And so we have to kind of be ready for everything. I will drop down to a daily chart and we'll come back to this. But this is the TLDR here that either we pull up, I'll just give you this line in the sand. If we have a bearish engulfing candle here for the week, that uh, is not good. Uh, and, and that would be a close below 67,800 uh, would be bearish engulfing. And also if we have this uh, early bearish early reversal indicator. Now we've talked about in our other classes that breakouts typically happen on the third or fifth attempt. And so we are, you know, I wasn't, this here originally I had as the second attempt, but it didn't quite get there. This was the third, the fourth. So uh, it's, it's looking more like either we bounce hard out of this and go higher or we drift down. And uh, some of the targets on this, um, you know, down to the 21 week EMA 61,000. Uh, and um, the, um, this person here I was just chatting with saying that his cycle theory suggests a, uh, let's see, the, um, I was talking and typing while I did this. A May 10th was the high and he thinks end of July might be the low. So it's new information equals new decision, everybody. And uh, if not July 28th, because it's an 80 day cycle and uh, then um, uh, could be into August. So this is the, uh, this is the graph here we're going to look at. We're going to look at the DXY here as well. Uh, DXY did push up higher. However, however, we are getting some resistance here. And I've had this arrow. So I would hopefully, you know, the best case scenario for us, uh, DXY rolls over here and does not go above 105.50. If we get above 105.50, on the DXY, and we do cover this in more detail in the M3 Active Trader class, which you can find out more about on our website called moonstream.io. And uh, just go down to the bottom, so I'll share that with you. And uh, we'll be talking about our indicators. This is mostly a news class and a training. And so um, uh, that uh, is what we want to uh, we want to unpack here. But uh, anyway, um, Let's see, uh, I need I needed to, to get out of my uh, VPN here. I have a little trouble pulling up the site here. But uh, anyway, moonstream.io slash M3. And you can uh, learn more about all that. And so uh, let me see here. Let me just do this. I'm going to turn off my VPN so that we don't have any issues there. So I'll just briefly disconnect and that would uh, let me do that. So I can't be too careful these these guys. But uh, at any rate, here it is. So pulling that up, moonstream.io. And down below, you can find out more about our Crypto Mastery indicators here. Uh, we are going to be talking about our pro indicators today. And I've just released a new video, which you can find out more about at uh, cryptomastery.org slash pro. I just want to give that these, these links to you 
so you have them. So, uh, and give you the tools, cryptomastery.org slash pro. And I'll pull this over here. It's going to redirect for you, but it's this is the URL, cryptomastery.org slash pro. And this is a brand new page. Hopefully it loads for us. And uh, yeah, so brand new video I recorded last night. Do watch this. This is very important, uh, these tools. And then of course, our M3 Active Trader will be diving in deeper tomorrow to things like DXY and the total market cap. But here the TLDR is, and I'm trying to set an alert. If the DXY goes above 105, let's call it 55, just to give us a little buffer, you know, that would mean lower prices on Bitcoin. So if we see DXY starting to push higher, that's bad. And we really were hoping that it would come down, have come down here last uh, uh, yesterday on this. But so let's keep an eye on it. It's a fluid situation. A lot of it, again, on the FOMC and CPI tomorrow. Uh, so let me, uh, let's just jump over into the news and talk about that for a little bit. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, we'll be talking about this here toward the end. And those of you that are here live, uh, welcome. Let me just see, I'll load my participants uh, window here. Got it on. Like, okay, a bunch of you here today. So, um, and if you'd like to find out how to join these classes live, by the way, you can go over to crypto or sorry, moonstream.io and sign up at the bottom of the page here. So if you want to be notified of these classes or their free resources, some of you are watching this on YouTube and uh, some of these are clipped up, cut into clips here, right here. Free live crypto training every Tuesday here at noon with me, yours truly, tr truly. And you can also get your trader success checklist. And uh, Myrene, if you can drop the link for that uh, to me, it's always hard to pull it up when I'm doing that live. And uh, we'll be using that as well. But let's jump over to the news. So Bitcoin slipping below 68K as uh, ETFs bleed, 64 million uh, Asian session. I saw this last night. I did post last night to our M3 Active Trader group that, hey, I think a sell-off is incoming and uh, to to just be aware of that. And sure enough, uh, that's, that's what's happening. So um, if you'd like a little bit more alpha and timing on these things, again, our uh, M3 uh, Active Trader class. So we have daily commentary in there, which I'll just share with you a little bit. I'm just trying to give you the lay of the land here. And let's see, um, I'm seeing some issues with that. Just for some reason, Cloudflare and VPNs issues today. But here, I wanna show you this. Uh, last night, I, I issued a warning and uh, basically saying, hey, I think we could be going lower here. So uh, here it is, warning. This was about uh, midnight last night. I'm concerned that we're potentially getting a bearish engulfing candle in the weekly chart, which could be further downside if we also get bearish ERI and TSI. So if you're here for the first time, you don't know what the ERI and TSI are. They are proprietary indicators that we've used to call all these market tops, pretty much every one of them, and uh, they're very effective. So um, I'm seeing a bit of that telltale signs. And uh, and then also, then today we did see that dip down below and kind of what we're looking at here today. So uh, basically that's what's happening, getting a sell off ahead of the FOMC and CPI. I wonder if some numbers were leaked or more likely, you know, the analysts on uh, Wall Street, et cetera, they have been doing this a long time, pretty good at reading the tea leaves, and maybe some of them employ ex-Fed employees so they can figure this stuff out. So, uh, Or it's just some hedging ahead of the CPI. Maybe we get a surprise, not sure yet, but certainly seems like some uh, news had leaked out that the numbers are not going to be good. Bitcoin slipping below 68K as ETFs bleed. So we saw the first outflows on the uh, IBIT ETFs. Uh, we'll jump over and look at that as well here on this chart. So we're seeing that on the IBIT four hour, which we have been watching for some time. Look at this, you guys, the RSI Pro giving us an early signal here with this bearish divergence. This red circle would have, so a couple, about two days ago, uh, and that was Wednesday, June 5th. So that was actually about a week ago, seeing uh, the uh, bearish ER, uh, bearish RSI on this. So uh, now we're a bit oversold on the four hours. So we could see a bit of a rally here, but it's not good that we're down below this prior support level. So this is looking bearish here for the uh, IBIT uh, as a whole. And uh, certainly we're seeing that uh, in the price as well of Bitcoin. So anyway, we'll come back to this. But again, I do would use this BlackRock IBIT as a surrogate and a kind of an early warning system of what Bitcoin is likely doing. And um, as we know, what we really want to do as soon as possible, because the trend is your friend, is identify new trends as soon as possible 
uh, when they uh, are forming. <clears throat> and so the question is, do we are we seeing the formation of a new downward trend? It's a little bit too early to tell. Usually we need uh, two data points. So on a four hour chart, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, daily charts a little bit more clear, but again, losing this lower trend line support and seeing a lot of sell pressure here at the run that $40 area. Uh, this is another one of our indicators, the order block detector, right? So we want to use this. It's been very, it's been uncanny as far as calling these tops. And so we want to pay attention to this. We had a bearish ERI on the IBIT two days ago on a daily, uh, missed that. Uh, that was over the weekend. And uh, so, um, but down below, a little bit of buy pressure down below 37 area. So I will put an alert on that. One of the cool things about these indicators is that you can set alerts on these. And so if we wanted to say that crossing down 37, then that might be a possible bounce area. And so I always customize my alerts here so it's clear on what that says. All right, so we'll keep a close eye on that. And we still are on the daily in a bullish entry zone on our dynamic average true range, another one of our in indicators. So that's not bearish yet. We're still in bullish market structure on that uh, daily. And so uh, not a whole lot more we can unpack here on uh, on this chart. So let's let's do get back over to the news. And again, if you want to find out more about these signals here, it's a new website, cryptomastery.org slash pro. Um, and it's a full uh, 40 minutes about all of what they can do. All right, so back into this, the Bitcoin Asian stocks traded lower, you know, Asian's uh, market kind of dra dragging things down. And also the US listed uh, BTC ETFs, cumulative outflows of over 64 million on uh, Monday. And we'll look at those uh, charts on tomorrow, tomorrow's class, but uh, there's various services where you can see that. And uh, like, um, Hey, uh, hey, Apollo is one of those. So, but basically, here's the TLDR. It was a risk off day in Asia. Risk off meaning, hey, uh, worries about e economics and interest rates. Uh, interest, uh, you know, fears typically negatively affect risk on assets. So, tech stocks, crypto, etc. So, this was a risk off uh, in, in day in Asia where they were, you know, hedging and also lightening their exposure on the long side. So, um, you know, 2% loss on Bitcoin down to 69K, 67.9 actually. And uh, so, you know, um, the we're going to look at the total market cap a little bit. That's my litmus test. That's the North Star that we want to watch. And so um, it's uh, unfortunate because we had we had the makings of a bull flag breakout that um, has has now reversed. So we do know at these key inflection points to expect volatility and just keep in mind, if this were easy, everybody would be millionaires. It is not easy. It's not designed for all of us to win. It's a zero-sum game. So anyway, uh, let's keep going. And basically, uh, in the so Chinese stocks fell over 1%, leading losses in the Asian equities. You know, there's been some talk about the yen and the Chinese yuan and uh, how that all plays out. And some other countries are starting to QE. And so uh, I, there's definitely some games being played at the economic level, the macroeconomic level, where I heard a rumor that, you know, the U.S. is sort of trying to maneuver it. So every other country does QE and that and therefore strengthens the dollar, dollar because we don't. Uh, and so here's part of it. Bank of Japan could trim its liquidity boosting bond purchases this week. And that's uh, basically slowing down their QE. And that would lead to a risk off timing, you know, more money in, liquidity cycles in, risk on assets up, the opposite tightening of liquidity, risk on assets down. It's just usually how that works. So the dollar index uh, talks about the dollar exchange rate against a basket of major fiat currencies. Here's the thing, the dollar is not getting stronger, it's just getting stronger relative to these other currencies that um, are starting to weaken because of the QE and various other factors. So it's, it's a bit of a uh, chess move there and um, you know hard to predict these things. So let's see, uh, talking about treasuries, don't wanna get too far into the rabbit hole with the macro macroeconomics of the US uh, markets here, talking about notes and bonds and things, don't wanna get into that. But here are the, the CPI tomorrow morning, and uh, we did just touch on that a little bit. Now, let me just get to the right chart there on the calendar. So CPI due out. Uh, this is the first thing in the morning generally. And let's see, 8.30 a.m. tentatively. So we'll know early tomorrow what's going on. The uh, forecast and the uh, core C CPI 3%. That was just, it was in line last time. And um, so the CPI month over month, year over year, 
uh, you know, there, there's, it, it's kind of hard to really understand uh, what those are. There's also the PPI coming out on Thursday. So sometimes that can move the market, the core PPI. So we have a big week of, of, uh, of, you know, um, economic numbers as well as unemployment claims. Uh, now these can be maneuvered a bit. I saw somebody talking about that. Uh, we don't really fully know uh, how these things are manipulated, so we just have to kind of see how the market reacts to the news. Show me the charts, I'll tell you the news normally. So Wednesday, FOMC will see the central bank publish latest quarterly projections. As we know, this is most often the uh, market reacts to the comments Powell will make after the actual interest rates, and so we can also see what uh, is projected. You know, what are people thinking that uh, the smart people? What do they think that is going to happen? So if I go down here to uh, the FedWatch tool and we can sort of get some idea on the uh, probabilities. And so let me just pull this up here. Yeah, so this uh, FedWatch tool basically is a 99.4% that we keep things right where they are. <laughs> So this time, but uh, 525 to 550, it's exactly where it has been. That's in the uh, the June um, the June meeting. Now, if we go out to July, we can see 90% they don't uh, ease. September, now, now we're, so this is staying very likely we start easing in September. So 50-50 chance. Well, gee, that would certainly make sense right before the elections. And uh, that would be the most obvious time they would drop interest rates to boost the economy. And uh, then when we get into, um, you know, but still 50%, they don't to drop uh, in, uh, in the um, uh, in the September, uh, sorry, the November area. Okay, so going down a bit of a rabbit hole there. All right, let's see. So let's talk about this. Bitcoin price hits new June lows while open interest stays above 35 billion. You know, like it or not, a lot of the markets are driven by uh, derivatives, open interest on options and for uh, futures rather. So keep that in mind. Um, by the way, we are starting to formulate our bear market bull strategy where you can fully hedge against downside, uh, either using Coinbase futures, which are new and, and available for US traders, but also um, if you're overseas using Deribit, uh, has a Bitcoin settled futures and options. So, you know, um, if we are at a key inflection point, it might be wise to uh, do an option spread or buy some put options just to protect your your uh, your portfolio on dips like these, which were somewhat unexpected, but not so much unexpected. Basically, since we rejected that that uh, upper trend line for almost the fifth time, it's 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 a tricky one because normally these are more clear. If we go to a daily chart, uh, you can see it a little more clearly. I have these numbers. Typically, uh, breakouts happen on the third or fifth attempt. So I originally had this. I had this as the second one, even though it was lower. And so I'm thinking this didn't count. We had the second attempt, the third, the fourth. So the next push up above this trend line should be the breakout. The question is, how low do we go? How low do we go? And, and that's where we're going to have to kind of see what happens uh, here in the next day or two. We've got some horizontal support. Actually, I didn't draw that in the right place. Let me move that for us. But, you know, you start drawing too many lines in the sand and uh, it can confuse you. So this one here, not really as relevant. I'm looking at this was support. This is kind of where we're at right now. Uh, previous support back in this range. Uh, really tricky uh, to to nail that, but we'll have to keep an eye on things. Tomorrow, everything's going to come down to tomorrow's economic news and the market's reaction to it. Do we get a bid rally up? Here's the thing, the two scenarios. If we have positive news and we start to push up here, I would say we do get that breakout. However, um, uh, talking to my friend with the uh, cycle theory, he's saying that, no, that May, uh, he was saying that um, uh, over here in May uh, twenty. May 20th, he said May 20th was a cycle top. And uh, he was also, he's done some really interesting you know, research. We'll talk about this more in M3, but uh, in terms of the cycle theories and, and the number of days. So if we go back 80 days here, uh, we're back to this little swing low. Okay, so these these 80 day cycles are pretty um you know, give or take a week or so, sometimes to the day. We're still unpacking this. We're going we're gonna to be coming out with an indicator that kind of gives areas of interest on these 80-day cycles. So you can see this was 86 bars. We can move it over there, 84 bars, and that sort of that uh, cycle put us right to this top, he's saying. So if that were the case, uh, that would put the next, the low, potentially. Uh, this is not financial advice. This is just so that you guys have these uh, targets in mind. 
And now if we did that from here, 80 days out, I'm not an expert in this. So, uh, but I was talking to one a minute ago, and we're going to be doing some cool things together. That would put this around August 8th. So we'll keep you posted. I don't think we drip down that far though. I don't think that makes sense. We'll keep it in mind as a maybe. Uh, it's a wag. But uh, having these ideal, these optimal cycle uh, areas is a good idea to at least be aware of. So anyway, uh, let's keep going and um, and discuss this uh, later. But let's dive back over to the news. And if you guys have any questions here, I, I have the chat open. So Bitcoin price hits new lows while interest stays above three. Yeah, so open interest. Um, what that also means is if there's a lot of liquidity at a certain level, the market makers will go try to sweep the liquidity and uh, and then move the markets in the direction that they want and reprice things. So uh, let's see. Um, yeah, so Wall Street's sort of they're saying stage a classic pre-inflation report come down. You know, this is Wall Street hedging their bets in case the numbers are bad. Uh, why not reduce exposure? So, um, you know, this is... Um, these are the games that are played at the highest levels. And, uh, you know, when I say games, it's 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 not like manipulation necessarily or nefarious movements. It's just de-risking positions. And we never really know how much of this is derivatives based and where the bets are being placed. So we just have to kind of wait and see. Uh, you can go down a rabbit hole on what about this? What about that? But in the end, you can't change this. You can't change what's going to happen. You can't change what how the markets are going to react to that. So um, best to have a long-term view on it and have some powder dry to buy the dip or and or be willing to take some losses off the table if we think it's going to go lower to buy back at a lower point. Hey, wouldn't mind a big capitulation drop and then to be able to dollar cost average in lower. Uh, however, some people, many people, part of the problem is that I'll just come back to, part of the problem is many people are all in and uh, we're swinging for the fences and they don't have, you know, sort of deer in headlights. So I would say as general um, advice, not financial advice, but uh, general advice is uh, take some, uh, take small losses so they are not deer in the headlights, head in the sand in case there's a bigger correction coming. Uh, always good to have uh, some powder dry if things, prices are coming down. All right, so basically... Let's take a look at this uh, 24 hours of trend, trend and Bitcoin closer to support. I thought I'd be talking about open interest here. And uh, let's see. Let me see if I can skim this for you guys. And uh, much ado about nothing in this podcast. Okay. Not a lot in this article, actually. So maybe I'll jump over to Crypto Panic and uh, see if there's anything more fluid. Here it is. Open interest is rising quickly again. When open interest gets too high, that's where the market makers and the bigger players like to come into the game and try to wipe the tips, uh, the chips off the table, as it were. And so uh, good to keep an eye on, but we have so much to watch. It's really hard to keep an eye on all of these things. So uh, let's uh, let's just see what the TLDR odds on this. Here's a better chart we can look at. So open interest here really rising up into these levels where, um, you know, these are hedge bets, uh, margin bets. And when the open interest gets too much, it's too tempting for the bigger players to come in and move market the other way and cause a cascade of liquidations. And so here we go. Uh, and we probably will see uh, tomorrow's data come out if we pull up the, uh, the liquidations map. It's probably not priced in, but uh, it's probably gonna be a billion dollars in liquidations. And you can Google these things. Here on CoinGlass has one. Let's see, I've used a couple of these before. Bybit has one, but let me move this over. So, you know, this, this is the real time. So basically in 24 hours, we have 255 million. I'm, I'm sure this number is gonna be higher. And uh, just looking at the uh, shorter time frames here, we've got um, uh, 24 hours since we're liquidated, mostly Ethereum, interesting. Mostly Ethereum. That's interesting. I don't know if that's that's on a one hour chart. Let's go to a 24 hour chart. Uh, Bitcoin, I would think, would have more. Uh, well, they're pretty close. OK, so 24 hour chart. Yeah, because it started last night. Even if we went to a 12 hour, it might give us a decent number. But ETH and Bitcoin, look at that head and head, 39 million on each. These numbers are delayed. So I think this is going to be much higher. Hasn't really been a flash crash, though. So, you know, I guess these are in line. I think these numbers probably come up to about uh, 500 million or so. Still, still um, not um, uh, not uh, not very uh, positive. Sorry, I just got sidetracked by Roaring Kitty's GME shares hit a billion dollars. 
Bitcoin open interest shores, uh, soars. What happened in GME? Uh, not the class for it, but this guy has been uh, in the news here for the famous um, Roaring Kitty with his Game stock, uh, GameStop shares was down 380 million. And last night I saw he updated his... Um, uh, so he's still down quite a bit. I'm not going to talk about that. This something misleading about this headline sends Roaring Kitty shares to billion dollars. I didn't think that happened. I thought he he had. Uh, this is probably. Mm, I I don't think that's rallying today, but maybe it is in, in this sell off. I doubt it. Anyway, Bitcoin open interest goes meteoric. Traders warn of a whipsaw. So this is more important for us. And I uh, always watch for news about open interest. When it gets super high, then uh, it's likely to get uh, some whipsaw effect. Now, this is June 6th. This is outdated, this news. Always check the news date, June 8th, a couple days ago. Uh, okay, so open interest spiking on Bitcoin. That's what we want to watch for there. Okay, uh, we'll just kind of unpack this a little more. I'm going fast because I want to get to something more relevant. We're just moving through the news to see if anything is yeah, David. Thank you. I wouldn't think GameStop is rallying. That was old news and a misleading headline. Now I know there was a rumor that if it went in his direction, he could be a billionaire, but it didn't. Uh, he was down. And did anyone see that? I know you and David, I, you and I were watching that, and uh, it looks like uh, Roaring Kitty's been on a year-long acid trip <laughs> since his last win. Um, anyway, um, but let's not get into that. So let's see latest news in crypto today. Yeah, I did hear this. This might be contributing slightly, although Australia is not that big of a player, but uh, basically cracking down on uh, gambling with crypto and credit cards, basically saying if you're going to do online gambling, you can't use money you don't have. And that would be sort of crypto and uh, credit cards. But this is not driving. This is mostly triggered by Asia de-risking in uh, their markets because Australia is not, not big enough to move the markets like that. So a little bit of FUD. And, um, you know, and then the ETFs, they had a 19 day green streak. So this is some profit taking, you know, hedge fund traders are really probability traders. They are risk managers. And so, you know, taking some profits on these is uh, prudent for them. And um, so I'm sure wish would have been nice of them to let us know they were going to do that. Uh, anyway, uh, that doesn't usually happen. I, I think that, you know, we're continually checked by our own uh, FOMO and saying, you know, clearly we've been in a down lower highs, resistance, resistance, resistance. And we all just wanted to believe that this thing would continue to go higher and higher. And it may, but we really needed a sell-off uh, day here and uh, some taking profits. So basically, let me just get all of these things on this chart so that I have them. And I got that one in there twice. So we don't need that in there twice. Uh, I didn't have it in there twice. Okay, one second, guys. These are some of our custom indicators that that I want to show you how to use. Some of you are new to these and just starting to use them. And so uh, basically, uh, we will go through these. Here's the Bollinger Bands, which I love. To use these effectively, uh, drag them up onto the, from the lower chart onto the upper chart. And let me see if I can clean this up a little bit. Okay. And then once you do that on the left-hand side, click on move Merge All Scales into the right. Okay, so there we go. Now it's now it will adjust with the prices. So uh, nothing terribly telling right now. Bollinger Bands, typically when it touches the lower band, it's oversold and should bounce. When it touches the upper band uh, or goes above it, even stronger signal. So everyone's usually asking, when should I take profits or partial profits? Well, here, see how we've color-coded this. When, when the price closes above the upper modified Bollinger Band, Remember, we're using a modified Bollinger Band. I, I had played with the settings because your standard Bollinger Band doesn't work in crypto. It's uh, it's too volatile. But uh, the settings that we've come up with work perfectly. So, and we've color coded it. When price gets up in here above that upper Bollinger, we put a red line. That's a sign to take some profits, not all of it, but typically it will go sideways, 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 or dip down for better reentry. Here we had it again, and then it dropped down here for a better reentry. And then uh, up here again, taking some profits, always a good idea. Continue, continue pushing up here higher a bit. But what we're watching for now is what happens next. And typically when Bollinger Bands tighten, there's a, a move coming. These, is the, these are the order block detectors. So there's buy pressure. There's buyers on the books here at 62K, 62.7, below 64K. So basically I would expect prices to drift down into this range. And uh, this would be a buying opportunity. However... However, if we are forming 
a new downtrending channel, uh, you know, and, and this thing could extend out into that uh, July time frame, um, it's possible. We just don't know. A lot of uh, different factors here with this cycle. And uh, so so this is my hypothesis. If we can't break higher here, then we're likely heading down lower, 62K in the 60K region for Bitcoin. A uh, lot of support back here previously. And certainly we could drift down into this range uh, into the end of July, and then we see a rally out after that. So basically we just don't know and how that um, plays out. Certainly nobody expects that, but we know that crypto and Bitcoin typically do what nobody expects. Okay, so I'll put that on there and I put a big old question mark on that because uh, we just, uh, we have no idea. A lot's going to be clearer tomorrow. So any questions, you guys, any comments? I mean, all I can do is report the, what is possible here. So let's go back to the news, then we'll come back to the charts and talk about that a little bit more detail. And uh, once again, you can find out more about those indicators, cryptomastery.org slash pro. So um, how built botless Web3 community, this gamified quest, this isn't really relevant, so we won't talk about that. Uh, is $4,000 Ethereum a distant dream? Futures premium plunged to three-week low. You know, look, Bitcoin and ETH are coming down. Uh, let's see, regulatory uncertainty. Uh, you know, this this sell-off, uh, certainly regulatory uncertainty may contribute a little bit, but I think that's been priced in. And But it's worth noting that there is still uncertainty and the markets don't like uncertainty. Is that right? So let me just take a look at this. We have ETFs, know that, lack of clarity, individual S1 fund pros. So here, regardless, either investors' bullishness, uh, according to derivatives metrics, has plunged or what's going on here. So regulatory uncertainty on the ETH price. You know, we still have uh, unclear signals when, you know, they've approved the ETH ETFs in theory, but they haven't given them full approval to go live with those. So the SEC, of course, at the behind the helm, and uh, behind the filings of BlackRock Fidelity. Now, if BlackRock was approved, they're going to get it done at some point. They just have to dot their I's, cross their T's a bit more. And probably, you know, based on the success of Bitcoin ETF, these guys want lower prices. They want to go and scoop up. They probably have conversations with the market makers saying, hey, we want to buy a ton of this ETH, but we want it down at lower prices. Okay, so um we'll see what happens so certainly that would be opportunistic for them and let's see here change the color of that one i was going to do it this one here but anyway it doesn't matter macroeconomic yes yeah, some got concern on the macroeconomic side as a real estate market so that's also guys have been talking about this for a while the real estate market the commercial real estate market shoe never dropped the other shoe never dropped lots of vacant buildings so you know the economy is, is questionable here with some of these possible hiccups in the wings and also we have coinbase binance kraken facing court actions for failing supposedly to register as brokers while offering securities uh, this is obviously an example of ask forgiveness not permission and the SEC is rightly, rightly saying, hey, look, um, um, you know, you guys have to slap a slap on the wrist. On the other hand, you know, they have all been trying to get more clarity out of the SEC, which has been regulating through enforcement, not telling the rules and then saying you broke the rules. Oh, geez, the times we live in, you guys. Uh, let's see. So we won't get into this. Tornado cash, we all know about that. Certainly some regulatory uncertainty and fear out there in the markets um, will be, uh, you know, but... But a lot of that's sort of priced in, but also why the the markets are so uh, jittery. You know, we say in crypto, uh, Bitcoin takes the stairs up and the elevator down. This is programmatic buying and selling. And so, you know, the markets are skittish. So the slightest sort of uh, spark or fear of economic data not being favorable can send things down fast, you know, and stop losses hitting, triggering liquidations, et cetera, et cetera. We've seen this before. All right. Uh, also, six U.S. regional banks are at risk of having their debt ratings downgraded. I heard there was more like 60 banks on the verge of possible collapse with unrealized losses. Basically, they haven't put it on the books. They've been kicking the can down the road. But now here, this is important, you guys, downgraded to meaningful, uh, be downgraded due to meaningful concentrations in commercial real estate. I'm going to make this one black because that's a bit ominous. And, uh, you know, so certainly... 
uh, that uh, that can't be sustained forever. They're going to have to sort of mark those to market and uh, and say, hey, these are uh, these are realized losses now, and uh, that's going to impact the markets. Might trigger more QE in some form. We're seeing that in the Chinese housing market also. Uh, yeah, 4 million apartments, no willing buyers. Remember when China went on that huge building spree, they were bought up all the concrete in the world. You couldn't get concrete, very expensive because they were they were building their way out of the uh, economic slump in COVID and uh, and previously to that also. And I've been, to, I was in Hong Kong, it was about uh, six years ago, seven years ago, and there was just massive, massive apartment buildings um, that you would never see here, thicker, wider, taller, and vacant, all of them vacant. And they, they were starting, they had fallen into ill repair, and they were, they're probably tearing those down by now. So basically, they tried to build their way out. Here, 4 million apartments, no willing buyers, sitting empty. Exactly. And uh, I saw that six years ago. So anyway, article notes, government incentives to buy these properties. The sponsor did not, did not deter housing prices from crashing. Highlights developers still on the brink of default uh, and intricately connected to local banks at the financial system. Is that China or here? Uh, see, an article of government incentives. I that's still China, but it does ripple effect over here. And and guys, whatever happened to that massive, massive default from the Chinese builder? Uh, what was the name of that one? I can't remember, but um, that's kind of that's still filtering through. I'm sure. So, all right, let's take a look at here. Worsening sentiment becomes evident. ETH futures options metrics was removed their most pessimistic point in the last three weeks. So professional traders prefer monthly contracts uh, because of the absence of funding rates. So basically, they'll use near-term front-run options and futures. And then at a certain point when the, the, the intrinsic value starts deteriorating too fast, they'll roll them to the next month. Okay. And uh, and neutral markets instruments trade at a premium 5 to 10% for the extended settlement period. It's a bunch of derivatives, um, blah, 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 and uh, blathering there. But let's just see. So the premium dropped to 13%. Uh, I don't want to give you on the data that doesn't meaningful for everybody. So what do we see here? ETH leaders stuck in a massive contradiction. Um, guys, I don't know. There's not, uh, I don't want to, there's nothing, there's not a TLDR here that won't confuse everybody. So looking at some other headlines there, like we've unpacked that pretty well. Evergrande, thank you guys. Yeah, Evergrande, whatever happened to them? We haven't heard the other side of that. So, all right, first data arrived from Bitcoin and ETH ETFs approved in the UK. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, but so what? ETH, uh, UK is not, doesn't have a lot of volume. So it's notable, but and maybe ticks a little bit closer to getting US approved and uh, enacted so as not to lose that revenue. But um, uh, anyway, I was just laughing at Cardano here and uh, Charles Hoskins in the news. Uh, uh, Charles is always preparing for something and never quite doing anything. Um, I don't know. Uh, sorry to hate on Ada, but uh, just a slow moving battleship. All right, let's see. In the news here, we've got, I don't know why more people are talking about Bitcoin here and what's happening. It's just fears of economic data. And so I thought there might be some other information there not so much let's see major spot eth out etf update so this is interesting uh, i didn't hear about this most sought after update on spot eth etf might come this week okay that's interesting uh, and uh, the keyword is might but let's just see despite sec uh the commission's granting approval the yeah they're waiting for the s1 all right i didn't know that was coming this fast uh, so per a source in communication with the SEC, some comments were anticipated this week. So expect a volatile week, you guys. Um, you know, just picture a circus juggler on a unicycle and uh, blindfolded. Um, a lot of moving parts on this one, you guys. So let's see. Uh, one perspective spot ETF uh, ETF issuer anticipating SEC comments back on the S1. Issuers have then file another round of amendments based on those comments. So it's it's kicking the can down the road. I wouldn't expect too much fireworks from this. And so basically, this is going to come later. Um, yeah, and surprisingly, a shocker, right, that the only communication from SEC Gary Gensler at a recent appearance on CNBC was ambiguous. Yeah, and and, and that's that's the nature of his uh, his role there. So uh, let's see, back and forth, back and forth. Basic SEC games, not giving clear information. 
So um, have, all analysts are, however, optimistic that the SEC gives the green light the product will perform well in the crypto space. Um, so, and uh, what am I doing here? That's, see, that's old news, you guys. It seemed like that was already happened. So disregard that. Always check the dates on this. How did this get on my radar? That was inside of Crypto Panic. And that's back from, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. It says this European dating. I saw November and I'm like, wait a minute. Sorry, forgive me guys. This is from uh, June 11th. This is current. Uh, there's Europeans. They like to do their dates backwards. And uh, so anyway, uh, or maybe we do it backwards because we defected from Europe. Who knows? Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. What else? We've talked about the liquidations. Let's jump over. Let's look at the time here. We're doing pretty well on time. Uh, so we've covered the charts. And so in terms of what else I'm seeing, you know, um, Solana is actually down in a buy zone. So while it is in still in a downward trending um, bull flag, uh, you know, potentially the, so there's good news and bad news here. The bad news is there's lots of sell pressure up above here on Solana. There's some buy uh, pressure down below. I would be dollar cost averaging in Solana in this green box. If we start seeing our other indicators uh, coming uh, bullish. And so what I'm going to do here is just jump over and add all of our pro indicators. So uh, I've got the rockets, I've got the crypto screener, We've got the ERI Pro already in the here. I'll add this one again. Uh, I won't do all of these. TSI, the order block detector, we have the RSI Pro there, and the signal line, the Bollinger Bands already there as well. I don't want to put too many on there, so we'll just stick with these. Okay. Screener, all red. So you can see not a lot of bullishness there. On uh, This is RSI and signal line. When these are all red, typically stay out. So we can turn off the uh, M3 screener here. Uh, it looks like I've got the TSI Pro on there twice, so I'll move that off. The ERI, I'm going to move that up. Hang on a second. Uh, this is an older version. I'm going to move the ERI, dragging it onto the chart. All right. And then over on the left, always do merge all scales into the one on the right, because then it'll move it where it needs to go and you can resize the price. And uh, and so uh, what do we have here? We've got, see, the RSI not showing us a whole lot there. A TSI uh, oversold, but I, I would want to see an ERI, ERI TSI. When you start seeing those things add up, that's when it's time to get in. Okay. And uh, let me just pull up the uh, checklist here and hopefully I can never remember the, 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 li the link for this directly to the checklist, Myrene, if you have that, then maybe you put this in the chat and let's see, I don't see that uh, necessarily there. So you can go to, let's see, uh, it's moonstream.io.checklist, I believe, or you can get it at our website. And just give us your name and email. We'll send it to you. Okay, so it looks like this. So it looks like we'll have to opt in. So all you do is go over there and moonstream.io slash checklist. Type in your name and your emails. And you can spam me all day long. I've got a great secondary spam filter that will eat that. All right, so go here, download the checklist. And uh, what you need to do here, though, is uh, download it into a PDF so that it's interactive. You guys have been here before. I've seen this. And uh, you want to make sure that these uh, these check boxes do function. So basically, in my downloads, I'm going to open it there as a PDF right here. Got it? So now we can use this. So, so checking this off is your Crypto Mastery Trader Success Checklist. When you get to a score over a 2 or 3 out of 21, it's typically buy-worthy. Uh, meaning it's okay to buy it. So not financial advice, but just as a guideline. And we have some of these are uh, not our indicators. Most of them are our flagship, again, being this early reversal indicator right there. So if we jump over into that Solana chart, do we have an ERI? We don't have one on the daily. Uh, and so we would be wanting to wait for that. So when in doubt, stay out. We do have an order block detector and an oversold TSI, but really on... You know, we don't have bullish signals uh, enough to be buying um, most things. We'll take a look at some other ones just to show you this. But in the checklist, as an example, when these start to turn around, these have been excellent in giving us early warning indicators to get into great trades. So if you see the ERI getting a green arrow, you would check this off. And then if you see this TSI turning from red to green down below, that's that trigger. So important. Back above the 20 line. Boom. And then you see it's giving you a score 
Now, two out of 21. Oftentimes, if I like the uh, month or if I like the chart, I'll be getting into that trade. And then the signal line, we'll talk about this. This is also a strength indicator going from red to green. Guys, you don't have to be good at this. Just do you know the difference between red and green? Uh, you can trade using these crypto mastery indicators. And then the trend indicator further confluence so when you see this green line below turn green it shows a new trend may be forming and the bell the key says hey we might be having a buy signal so pay attention and then the bell is that buy signal the new trend pro puts a vertical green line on these so it makes it even easier to see and so if i were to turn that on down below actually i don't think i loaded it on this chart uh, let's see if we have uh, have that uh, on this one here. Yeah, so there it is. I'll just move it to the bottom and open it up. So here's that trend indicator. You guys have seen this before. It's great for catching longer extended bull runs. So if we catch it down here again, the key is the the trend may be changing. The, the bell is your buy. The bag of money is your sell price. And you wait for a new key and bell. And you can use the secondary one as a take profit signal there. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Now, technically, so two things have happened uh, in recent days on Bitcoin. We had a key and a bell. And then we lost the number sequence and we've gone red. So this sequence is now no longer valid. And we can see that in the price rolling over. But when we do come back to these, and let me just show you this so that if you're new seeing this, and even if you are used to that, or maybe you're a new Crypto Mastery user, um, and uh, so coming back into this area, let's see, I think this will take everything off. No, this is a good one. So just using the ERI back here, let's do a uh, replay. So we're just going to go all the way back in here in time okay so this is back to april 24th we had price coming down we were sandwiched between buy and sell blocks we weren't really sure what was going to happen and let me just go 3x speed and just coming down coming down coming down coming down and then the, the buy orders went away but we got an eri right there okay so this is where i would be looking to buy although we hadn't confirmed yet with this tsi i'm giving you a real-time example so we're going to go one more block over. Now we have confirmed on the TSI going green. So right on this trade success checklist, what do we have here? Uh, I don't want to be talking down to you guys. It's super simple and we've made it that way. But here, ERI, check. E uh, TSI green and above 20, check. Now we have enough to potentially enter that trade. So I'm going to push. We're going to do a, a test here, uh, some real-time, semi-real-time <laughs> reverse engineering. So I'm going to hit buy. So that you would have bought a position there. And then we're going to keep going and add to the position. That's the whole key of these signals is adding to the positions once they start to also go green. And in, in reality, we had a, a RSI that, was, that happened before. We could have been buying back here and I just didn't have that turned on. And then when this signal line goes green, we'll buy more as well. So let's go ahead. I'm going to hit one more block. So here the green signal line is on. I'm going to buy another piece of this trade. So you can certainly dollar cost average and buy more of these things. Okay. Now we're kind of up into a sell block zone. But uh, let's see. I will continue going with this. Getting a sell order on the ERI. So it's a little bit premature and not confirmed with the TSI. But maybe we'll sell one just to sort of take some profits. And then sure enough, this came down. Then we had bullish engulfing candle, which is also on the checklist. Okay, so we can come back down here and, uh, and say, hey, do we have a bullish engulfing candle? Now we've got three on the checklist and potentially more if it's at support. It isn't, but I'll buy one anyway. And uh, so basically, uh, so sideways, sideways and pushing higher there. Nice big bullish engulfing candle there as well. So at this point, we might want to turn on our Bollinger Bands and just see, hey, when would be a good time to take some more profits? So we'll ride this a little bit higher. We're still going higher. Now we're getting a red on the RSI. So I'll sell one. Real simple. Red, sell, green, buy. And we'll keep pushing forward on this. Big green still going higher, so that's good. And we'll wait for any sell signals. Starting to see a red TSI, but we're getting a bell on the trend indicator. So maybe we'll let this thing go a little bit farther. And let's see. I don't know what's going to happen, so just kind of taking this one step at a time. And uh, now we're seeing that Bollinger Bands tighten. Okay, and uh, we're still in this trade, so let's just see. Then we had a red TSI there, and a red, sorry, red ERI, red TSI. So I'll sell one more there, 
And I don't know if we're even, I think we might be still positive one, but here we go. This is through today. So if we'd follow that, we had a 66.67 win rate and $7,000 in cash based on the uh, the trades we were doing, which I think was like one Bitcoin or something like that. I'm not sure, but you can see how powerful these tools are. Guys, you need to have these. Please go over, if you don't already have them, to cryptomastery.org slash pro and watch the new video that I've just put up there because uh, it's uh, it covers it in detail and more examples, okay? Um, you need to have these. And inside the Trader Success Checklist, we have things like, you know, candle body support, as price above the 21 and 50 day EMA. You can use this even without our indicators. It just works much better with our indicators. You know, is price rising above support? Is it breaking above resistance? And then here's our rocket indicator that uh, has been so uh, important for us in the past. And it's finally programmed into a, a, a token. So let me just turn on the rockets here. See if we can see any rockets. You guys see any of these? Let me do this and that. And uh, and just turn off the ERI. The rocket was programmed uh, to uh, show uh, special situations where price is about to move up higher or faster. And so we programmed that on uh, some EMA moving averages, which you can't see here. But here's two rockets which shot up in the sky. Here's another rocket that shot up in the sky. And so essentially, uh, these are highly accurate. Here's another one. This one didn't really work. But um, these are used best with uh, exponential moving averages. So basically, though, when we see this kind of a pattern uh, on the rocket, it's explained very thoroughly in the Trader Success Checklist. So basically, a rocket is a green candle with a real body resting at support, like right here, a textbook rocket sitting on a 21-day EMA with a wick down below, and that closes at or near the top of the day, which it did. See, no, hardly any wick. This is a telltale sign. This is about to shoot up much higher, especially the more rocket fuel in this candle. If you look at it like a bottle rocket with the little fuse down below, think of 4th of July when you're out back lighting off bottle rockets, hopefully safely, that's coming up, you guys. Uh, that's why I named it the rocket. Sitting on the launch pad, you just light the fuse, shoots up in the sky, runs out of rocket fuel, and it falls back down. This is a great setup that we love, and we've programmed that into uh, this, this suite. So... Um, couple things, uh, you know, we'll go through all of this. The ERI Pro has uh, now these fluorescent green buy blocks. That is money flow. So that's, uh, that's a useful tool, been very handy. And then, of course, our new Bollinger Band Pro. So um, and there's also some other things in here, like three inside ups and bullish engulfing candles. When you see the radars all green, the dynamic ATR, these are all clues that your trade is about to go higher and become bullish. On the flip side, we have these also for the bearish side. So if you check the one of these off, it's going to lower your score a bit. So uh, go ahead and download this, guys. It's at moonstream.io down at the bottom. It's a free trade success checklist. There's some advanced setups as well. So uh, utilize that. It will give you an edge. And uh, let's just jump back into the charts, see if you guys have any questions and uh, comments, though. I don't see any. So we're coming up on the hour, you guys. If you want me to look at anything or look at any coins, let me know now. Uh, let's look at stacks here for a minute. This is a great example using the uh, indicators. So, um, and actually, so stacks on a weekly time frame has a bullish engulfing candle. We have an ERI, we have a TSI, we have an RSI. So let me just go in and refresh this using our trade success checklist on stacks. What do we have? Well, we have an ERI. Let me do this so I can toggle it faster here. We'll go like this. So just back and forth. So we have an ERI. Whoops. Where do we need to go? Uh, bear with me right here. So basically, ERI, check, green arrow. See that? Okay, and then do we have a TSI and green above the 20 line? Uh, we do, right here. Well, it's not quite above the 20 line, but it's sloping higher. I'm going to go ahead and give it one. A little bit premature. I'm going to do that. So, okay, there we go. And has the signal line turned from red to green? Signal line. No, it hasn't. Signal line is a different oscillator. So we'll wait for that. When that starts to go green, we'll give that another check. So we'll leave that blank. Is the trend indicator showing a key and a bell? Uh, it's not. Okay, we don't have that. We're still red on the midline. And now I haven't added yet, because it's brand new, I haven't added the RSI Pro. We are getting bullish divergence and a bullish circle. Okay, the last time we had that on the weekly time frame on Stacks was back here, November of 2022. Was that a good time to buy, you guys? Was that a good time to buy all the way back here 
It was a great time to buy. And we had double ERIs before pushing higher. Okay, so um, we're getting that again on a weekly time frame. It's a bit, bit early. I, I might want to see this go above 20, but we could give it another check just based on that. And also, it's above the 50-day EMA. So that's bullish as well. So essentially, we're going to come down here. Is there bullish engulfing candle? There was a bullish engulfing candle right here. You see that? All right, so there is another clue this is going higher is the candle body at support we just saw that it was it's at support here as of yesterday i would say that still works and that is the price above the 21 and 50 it's above the 50 it's not above the 21 yet so we're going to wait on that for stacks and uh, is a above a rising support trend line well certainly you could draw this here uh this trend line and come on, trading view there. Okay, so it is at a rising support trend line. So there we go. We can give that a check mark. And uh, so anyway, and then there's other things like this volatility index I haven't talked about. Uh, the rocket, we have green buy blocks. So you see these buy blocks. This is money flow. Now, here's my theory. Here's what I'm noticing, by the way. On weekly timeframes, when you see these order flow buy blocks on a weekly time frame, Price will support and will will respect that. So back here, we had a heavy buy block there. Now back in Feb of 2023, sell pressure came back down. But let me just draw this for you. But it came down into this other buy block zone and it held. All right, here's another example. So up here on this weekly time frame, buy blocks in here. Uh, actually, I misdrew that, uh, but it's good to know that there's future support in these zones. Why is that? Well, because uh, they, they want to protect their positions. And um, this could be market makers, this could be whales, but seeing these pushing out, coming back. So I think this is bullish for us, you guys. And uh, and so while I won't give it another check mark, hang on, where did this thing go? Uh, stacks here. And then I want to jump over to this. These things, the buy blocks. This is money flow. And when you see these on the weekly time frame, it, it means more money flow came in. Okay, so that's a bullish signal for stacks. So where are we with that? We're at a 6 out of 21 on stacks on a weekly time frame. That's pretty good trade. Now, the daily time frame, it's not as promising. Okay, so we want to be aware of. Uh, what time frame we're, we're trading in okay so a little bit bearish on the tsi and could come down a bit but still within the weekly looking okay you know I, if it came back down to this region i would be looking to dca and buy more stacks based on the weekly time frame okay so all right anything else we want to look at we've got the bollinger bands tightening so typically that precedes another move follow through so any you know any bullish news or movement into this market i think stacks is going to run uh, it's one of the stronger ones because everything else is selling off okay on the flip side though we are entering an exit zone on the atr you can use this as a trailing stop but uh this is mostly just going sideways i think that this resolves and of course we don't know but i'll turn that off for now we're just trying to create a scenario of what's uh, what's most likely to happen so anyway uh chain link so dr conti would like to see sure let's take a look at chain link why not and so chain link's been struggling you know really to keep back above that uh, 20 dollars and i was disappointed to see that kind of fall below i think chain link in the right market environment can go to 60. Uh, but uh, Chainlink, you know, selling off a bit. Let's take a look at the daily and then the weekly. Uh, the a lot of sell pressure up here in this $26 to $42 range. So I would be looking to take profits around $25 at that upper Bollinger Band. There's going to be sell pressure there on the weekly time frame. Uh, things are rolling over a bit. Not looking great on the weekly. But long term, it's a good project. It's just uh, likely... I would say this goes back down to $12 in this mid-range, $12.66, $12.13. I think that's where it'll head. That would be a good place to DCA buy. And uh, and certainly, if we do have an extended sell-off down in this $12 or $10 range, you know, if you have powder dry, putting some limit orders in there, let's say we get a capitulation sell-off tomorrow or the next few days, and then it bounces. Those are some great times to pick up coins at a discount. And uh, But ideally, waiting for ERI, TSI, you know, signal. We used to say ERI, TSI, signal, and bell. Now we have this great RSI indicator that shows divergences. So there's no divergences showing on Chainlink, which would indicate it is heading lower. 
Um, I think, um, you know, Chainlink later on will be popular. I, I'm kind of changing my thesis on this bull market. I think that um, uh, money is going to flow to the strongest ones, ETH, Solana, and Bitcoin, and then slowly trickle into some of the others later. But, uh, but Chainlink, what we can also do here is draw... Let's see, I want to draw a new trend channel. There's there's trend channels within trend channels here. Uh, the trend is your friend until it isn't. So let's see if we can clean that up. This is actually a good teachable moment. Uh, what does my radar say? I imagine it's not all green. It's uh, long term and short term it's green, but midterm it's red. Okay, so, and it's getting, it's just flipped over into exit territory on the dynamic average true range. So uh, what I see here is a downward trending channel that slightly broke higher and is now heading down again. Uh, this uh, this does look weak. If you're in chain link, I would, to be honest, I would take, I would sell some, take a partial loss, unless the caveat is always, you know, if, if you're not wanting to take short-term capital gains, you want the long-term capital gains, uh, that's a different story. Um, you know, I'm a trader. I don't worry about that um, in in my trading account. And the longer-term holds, we're just holding on. But uh, in this, this is bearish. I think this does drift down. And if you were to sell some chain link with the intent of buying back in these buy zones, setting your buy alerts around $12.00, $12.80, you know, even $13, get ahead of it. And you can fill your bags down in this zone if it starts to bounce. It's a strong accumulation area, but the markets are weak. This likely sells back down again. So hopefully that helps. That's on the, the uh, daily time frame. Uh, weekly time frame. I'll just turn off the ATR because it changes the candle colors. Uh, getting a bearish ERI on the weekly time frame. What I would be concerned about is if this TSI goes red and it's about to. So, um, yeah, thank you. And uh, for that, uh, Dr. Conti. So, um, you know, I would suggest getting the indicators if you don't already have them. That way uh, you can use these yourself. But uh, this this to me is bearish. Now, you'd we'd want to hope that the 50 day, sorry, the 50 week EMA would hold. But you see these wicks down below again, down in that twelve dollars sixty eight range, right? So I would suggest that would be a good place to uh, to buy the dip. And assuming you know the markets kind of recover there, um, this this to, to play out like something like this in that range. So so that's what I see on uh, Chainlink, and uh, that helps. KNC uh, Kyber Network was watching that the other day. It was looking good. Let's take a look at char a chart of Kyber Network. Uh, now I'm on the weekly, so not looking so good on the weekly. What was I? What was I saying then? Um, uh, is this no? This is the wrong one. KNC Kyber Network. I somehow pulled up the wrong one there, and this this is it. Yeah, that looks more like it. So we had a rocket. That's interesting. But yeah, it was kind of a sloppy rocket. Our, our signal doesn't always quite get it. I like to see the real body on the EMA. I do like the EMAs coming together here. So if we had the EMA ribbon on, they would have been tightening. So nice looking chart. That must have been what I liked on a daily time frame. Uh, not looking terribly good. I think it was the weekly that, I, yeah, so the weekly time frame looking good on Kyber Network. But but when I say good, uh, hang on a second. Don't go out and buy it. So, um, you know, so yeah, so this this is what I liked about it. It has a nice bottoming pattern, but we know that these don't always play out. And... Right. So and watch the volume, very low volume on this, at least on Bitfinex. Uh, it depends where you're trading it. If you're ever unsure, though, you should look at it on multiple different exchanges and look for the ones. Let's look at Coinbase, more volume, but even then low volume, lowish volume. Sell block right in here at a dollar. I don't know. This is not that attractive because uh, this sell block will certainly sell off if you want to keep it on your radar. Uh, set your alerts right above where the sell block was. And then just put a little note to yourself, say buy, and then question mark. That way you can go back and re-add all of your indicators and, and do your, your trade success checklist. Uh, you know, once it becomes mechanical, it takes a lot of the emotion out of it. Um, you know, and really you need to get to that point. Now, don't be checking in with your astrologer or meditating and all that stuff. I, you know, I mean, do whatever works for you. But, uh, you know, make it me mechanical and probability-based using technology. So do watch that video that I just recorded late last night. It was up till 2 in the morning recording that. 
uh, for you guys because uh, I wanted to give the nuances on on how these new pro indicators are working for us and they're working great. Uh, problem is the markets aren't really cooperating. So there's two things here I like on Kyber, actually three. Uh, we have an ERI. It's a it's a faint one, uh, which isn't as strong, but it does have some support there. And then the second thing that I like is that there's a TSI. Those two alone generally are enough for me to be like, you know, this this I'll I'll dabble into this. But since the markets are weak right now, I wouldn't be diving into this one. Um, we've got the signal line kind of going green, but the slope is down. I don't like that. I am we are getting a key, but we don't have a bell yet. So I would wait. I would wait on on this. It's sort of let the cake bake, as Joe says. Uh, it's not quite baked yet. So anyway, um, anything else, you guys? Uh, anything else we want to look at? We can certainly pull up the uh, the uh, Coinbase. Let's see, is it Coinbase? No, it's um, a Trading View. Uh, hot movers, I think it is. And FTM, David says. All right, we'll jump over to that. Most active stocks. Uh, all right, hot movers for crypto. We need to be clear. Yeah, top gainers today. Sometimes we find some gems in here, like ATOR Protocol back in October of 2023. It was on this list, and that thing just took off. We made a lot of money in that in our Retire Rich program. Uh, Covalent. Yeah, I saw CQT was up today. Let's jump over and uh, have a look at uh, Covalent. Let me just jump to a chart here. Uh, Fetchcoin just getting bludgeoned. Um, terrible uh, news. <laughs> this is one of my larger holdings. Um, geez, you know, look at this big sell order block. So I should, based on today's closing, I may have to, I may sell half the position. I'm kind of seeing if it holds at this 618 retracement, though, Fibonacci. So, you know, if you go low to high, and it's kind of in that range. Uh, you know, it, ideally, Fetch would come back up a little bit and hold, and this would be a DCA buy opportunity, but it's not looking very good. Uh, and it's in a downtrending channel. Uh, and I took my eye off it. Should have been watching that a little bit closer. All right, so uh, basically, where do we want to get to? It was um, Covalent uh, CQT. That's going to be on uh, on the which trading list I've got for my inner circle list where is it where is the what's going on here it won't let me show oh i know why sorry you guys over here rat master list there lots of tools inside of this program so our inner circle wealth watch list uh no this is going to be in the ai list right so i have all these lists of coins and things ai tokens there you go i'm going to sort that and sure enough i saw cqt was up at the top up 14 percent, but you know that um this chart doesn't tell us nearly enough. I, I do like the chart. Uh, so buy blocks down below. Uh, TSI green. It's a little bit lukewarm, but it's better than nothing. You know, waiting for the signal to go green. It's kind of a meh. Man, it's kind of a meh, you know, meh. So I, I don't know. I don't love it, um, but uh, I'd keep an eye on it. Set an alert basically on the daily, though, probably going to come back down into this 18 cent range. So, you know, we, we want to be careful not to be looking for opportunities where there really aren't any. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to scroll through here. 10 percent. Uh, I don't want to deal on anything like meme coins necessary. Baby Dogecoin. No, no, no. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Titan Swap, Tyrus Throne. None of these uh, are really of interest there's metaverse trius token i don't know guys spidey sense I, I metaverse has kind of been somewhat interesting although not quite interesting enough yet uh, i do want to have a metaverse list and okay so this is interesting spidey sense for the win so basically what i was suggesting before are these order blocks in the past tend to hold price point so uh this is one i'm going to add and put on our radar I'm going to put that in our inner circle watch list. And uh, since it's metaverse, I guess it's kind of AI. And somewhere in here, I thought I had a metaverse list here, metaverse company. So I'll add it to the, those right there. And what specifically I'm interested in, can you guys see it? It's real simple. Uh, and you want to be drawing these as soon as you can, right? Look at that parallel channel. It's at the bottom of a parallel channel. What we'd want to see on the Trius token is just price wise i'm going to set an alert over 80 cents or sorry eight dollars rather uh crossing up potentially bullish and i also want what's great about these indicators and the tsi specifically i love to just go in here and uh right click 
on its set and alert on when it goes green and over 20. So crossing up over 20, okay? Because that's gonna tell us by signal um, and specifically when this, this is the 20 line, this would be green by then. And that for me is a trigger confirming this ERI. Everyone get it? Okay, so uh, on a daily time frame, daily time frame actually looks fairly interesting. RSI is green, TSI is oversold, getting an ERI. Uh, and, and in this sense, I'm gonna set in another, another alert uh, right here. Why up here? Above the 21 and 50 EMAs at $9. Let's sandwich this thing. Actually, that's not quite it. Uh, $10. I want to know uh, when this thing gets above $10. Why do we do this, you guys? To catch entries early. We're in an uptrending channel. Guys, look at this. If we get it at, say, $8 and it goes to the top of the trend channel, uh, that's a 300X. That's a 3X. Beats a sharp stick in the eye, right? Okay, cool. So... Let's see, uh, we'll do a couple more here. Arrow, uh, I do recommend you guys go through and using our indicators, go through the top gainers and um, might put some new things on your uh, radar. We have other metaverse here, MEV. Um, I'll, I'll bite, I'll bite since metaverse is on my mind. Uh, I think I've seen this before. Uh, it's considerably less interesting. However, what do we have? I mean, look, we, we just, we don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth. Very low volume, but ERI, TSI, RSI. Um, I mean, I'll add it to the metaverse list. So, you know, we, I want to be keeping an eye on these as we go. Metaverse companies, and I'll put it in my uh, AI list there. So, cool. All right. Well, there, we checked one out, an extra one. I'll take it off of here, off of here, and then, but you guys can follow up on those other ones uh, on your own time. Uh, and uh, yeah, definitely recommend doing that. So let me close this, save this, and close that out. Okay, so so a bunch of these, I'll just skim through. Nothing else I see that's familiar, but sometimes this is where you find some big gems and just put them on your radar, put your alerts on the indicators, especially like when the ERI forms. Did you know you can do that too? That's our earliest signal. And uh, so if you come in here, and for example, I want to know when the next time fetch has... And ERI, what's going on here? I need to click on it a little bit clearer. And add alert on the ERI Pro. And basically, I want to know when it goes green. Green is ERI. So boom, right there. I want to know next time the ERI Pro green arrow. That's my early reversal indicator. So there you go. There you have it. All right. So uh, let's see. We've got some, um, let's see, Pirate J. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we... Um, uh, look at Phantom Coin. Fetch, fetch sucks. I'm sorry, I, I, but you know that that had we we were. I was recommending this on this breakout. I had all the signs, but it just rolled over. That's why we use these trend channels, and sometimes we have to readjust them. And shoulda, coulda, woulda. You know what? Uh, I should have been sort of taking some off the table when this broke and when this sell block happened. But uh, I've been busy. And the markets have been crazy, and this has really been selling off here. So uh, it's a it's a shame. I, I think probably it'll hold down around a dollar thirty, and I will dollar cost average. I do like this project. A lot of this was by the rumor, sell the news. The merger between Fetch and uh, Ocean and Ajax sort of came and went. The sell off, I don't understand, but you know, well here here's what's happening, you guys. Actually, I did watch an interesting video of Ben Cowan last night. Uh, you know, altcoins are selling off against Bitcoin. People are selling their altcoins to buy Bitcoin because it will likely lead the next phase of the rally. And then people sell their Bitcoin to buy ETH and Sol and Chainlink, and then they go, and then they, you know, profits turn in, go into altcoins. So altcoins are sort of out of favor here in the near term. And, um, you know, would have been cool to have figured that out a week or two ago, but really thought we were going to break higher and it would have carried rising tide carries all boats. So this uh, crypto stop is difficult. Uh, you don't, you do need the, all the tools you can get and need to be watching them. Okay. So uh, arrow, uh, what do you want to see here on arrow? Uh, it's uh, to me, the only redeeming quality here is it's got, which isn't a bad one, support resistance. 
Uh, however, we were trading this on uh, rain precipitate, hoping that would hold, and it did not. So low volume, I would not be buying Aerodrome, Aerodome here. And it sounds like a Tina Turner, Turner movie. Uh, and uh, so it's oversold, but wait for your signals. Wait for your ERITSI on uh, Arrow, Perry. Let's take a look at Phantom Coin and just see. We've got, let's see, anything moving here? Tria, uh, not really. Sui Pad, all these are in downward trending, all just bleeding out. Okay, uh, let's do this. So uh, I want to go back. What are we looking at here? FTM, right. So uh, total market cap we should have looked at here. Do I already have that pulled up? Uh, I usually do. Yeah, to total market cap. Mm, looks like we're creating a new downward trending channel. Don't like the looks of that at all. But we, we have to see what happens here tomorrow with the economic news. So let's see, you said uh, fetch no, phantom coin is uh, in a buy block. Uh, now, here's the thing. These things will depend on the exchange. I see that a couple things I see, though. We see support here. And again, if we draw this weekly, I'm not sure if it'll stay there. Okay, so the weekly buy block is a bit lower. Uh, what exchange are you seeing that on, uh, David, on uh, uh, Phantom Coin? Because I don't see there's a buy block on Gemini and, and that's why it's pays to look on different exchanges. So let's look at it on, uh, uh, by the way, really frustrated with Coinbase lately. I think their support is horrendous and they should be ashamed of themselves. Uh, they need to do better. Uh, Gemini does a good job. In case anyone's asking, uh, really just, mm, I've never had such bad customer support than Coinbase in my life. Uh, anyway, so Phantom Coin, um, where is it? So it must be the USDT pair probably, and then it pops on Coinbase, I would imagine. Uh, maybe Coinbase doesn't have Phantom Coin. Huh, interesting. They've got all kinds of other shit coins. I don't see why they wouldn't do Phantom. But anyway, uh, buy blocks, not on the weekly. I don't see buy blocks, David. Let's see. Uh, okay, got to go talk to you later, David. So let's see. Perry says, do you use the center dotted line of a channel as a possibility bounce? Not usually. Well, um, I will look at it, but I haven't have found it to be terribly reliable. So where uh, is, let me find a chart with that uh, in it. Look at this old chart on Bitcoin where I, I said we might come down and um, and, huh, sorry, CM Pro Pack. Uh, okay, I'm looking for one that I already had it drawn on. Well, so here's on the iBit, for example. Yeah, Phantom's not on Coinbase, I knew that. Uh, it's sometimes hard to do these things, move your mouth and use your brain at the same time and move your mouse, mouse, mouth and brain at the same time. Tricky stuff, man. <laughs> And just kidding. Um, so so the midpoint, this was not really relevant. I like the IBIT on the four hour. So, you know, you can see, you can see like, you can see some of this and I'll watch it on occasion, but it hasn't really panned out. You know, it's sort of a, uh, not causal, but some people do more of that. It's not something that I, that I really look at. Short answer. Uh, yeah, so basically that's about all we have time for you guys. I, I don't see there's much else to tell you other than watch these levels. We are under resistance level. I bit looking weak. Um, you know, not what anybody wanted here. Could we rally out of this? We could, and maybe we do. Uh, but, uh, I want to see that this holds. Now, if we touch the lower Bollinger Band, that uh, is usually a sign that of a short-term reversal. But the problem with these midpoints, the 21-day and the 50-day EMAs, you guys in M3 Trader know, I call it the being under the ice. Okay, you don't want to be under the ice because then we're drowning. And a more specific example of that is the bull market support band on a weekly time frame. And uh, that's, that's, you know, when we get below, it's, it's worth watching this because a bull market support band um, if we get below that, then usually it stays there for a while. Okay. And uh, let's just look at this here for a second. Uh, we do have Bollinger Bands tightening on the weekly on Bitcoin. So a move is coming. 
but do you see this uh, usually eight to 12 weeks below the bull market support band if we close below it so going back to the last market cycle we broke the bull market support band here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten um you know 10 11 weeks got back above it bounced the support now those of you familiar with wyckoff patterns this was the up thrust after after distribution so and this was a huge fake out okay so we want to be aware of these and then back below the bull market support band one two three four five six seven this is about 16 weeks uh below uh you know under the ice drowning popped up above it fake out lost it again and then boom we were down here drowning for for months so even here in the bull phase got below at one two three four five six seven ish weeks so we really really need to see this hold above so if we start closing below sixty thousand, we got trouble uh on the weekly time frame so uh we will keep an eye on that bull market support band break okay uh, i will put it in a, a notepad too because you know the problem is you come back later and it's like what was i what did i mean by that but a bull market support band right in this region okay you guys so this is what to watch out for we got a lot going on in these markets here uh, i would say uh, all eyes are on the fomc and the cpi there might be a knee-jerk reaction what's my best guess my best guess is a scary number and a capitulation sell-off that 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 catches itself maybe we go down to this 62k range and then we kind of push up higher out of it that's what i i think I, that's what i think happens you know these market fake outs uh, are uh are, are what uh not they're frequent market fake outs are frequent Okay, you guys, uh, thanks very much. I don't think I missed anything. Um, let's see, many coins is more about setting up proper alerts and management stay on top of changes as they happen. Yes, yes, Perry, yes. Read what Perry said. Uh, I'll read it for you. It seems like trading many coins, uh, more than 20, is more about setting proper alerts. Absolutely. In my private clients, I say, let's not have more than 25 unless they are moon or bust coins. You put 500 or 1,000 in them and you don't watch them, you don't touch them. All right, and uh, so, uh, but to manage that many when markets turn, it's impossible to manage. You know, you need your alert set up and, um, and ideally your stop losses. But uh, the problem with stop losses these days is that they, there's, the market makers, uh, they'll move price to take out stops. They can see your stops, you guys, and they have A books and B books, and they can kind of help maneuver and massage price, go out, take out your stops. Uh, you're not paranoid. This happens at a macro scale. All right. So anyway, use your alerts and then go make your your determinations. Uh, let's see. GDJ says you can trade Phantom on the, the mobile app. OK, I think that's more of the wallet, though, isn't it? Um, I don't know. Either way, uh, either way, I prefer Gemini for Phantom uh, coin and many others. Uh, Gemini runs a really nice operation. Um, the platform on Coinbase is OK. Their fees are high. You know what I did here? I hear Robin Hood's up and coming in crypto. Uh, and uh, many of you know I'm part of a class action lawsuit against Coinbase, so not a huge fan of them. Uh, they locked me out of my account during the big uh, summer crash in 2021 for two months. Couldn't get in, couldn't sell my coins, uh, useless support. Finally had to complain to consumerfinance.gov, and then they gave me access to my account after losing 25k in uh, uh, downward pressure. And so, um, yeah, did they they offer they offered zero apologies or near zero accountability? So I, I kind of think they're a horrible company, actually. But um, uh, I think that they're having growing pains. I would love to see someone else win. I like the underdog. I like Gemini. I would even move to Robin Hood. But um, yeah, the, the one thing they're excellent at Coinbase, they have an excellent customer prevention department. Yeah, I'm trying to set up a Coinbase Prime institutional account for a trust that I have uh, and just uh, um, unbelievably confusing. Their chat is, un, un, is poorly trained and incompetent and their phone support is equally so so anyway yeah Perry true Robin Hood wouldn't let people trade their own GameStop or AMC <laughs> tyranny uh, I mean that's more of self-preservation to stay in business 
Uh, and um, but yeah, I, I mean, you know, love to see. I tell you where things are moving the, to the decentralized exchanges like DYDX, MEXC. MEXC is an exchange actually, but the 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 DEX is like um, DYDX is a good one uh, where where basically uh, they don't uh, they don't clear through a centralized place. And so um, anyway. But uh, anyway, uh, we will talk about Susie saying, I don't recommend Robinhood for crypto. Good to know they have locked up a friend's holdings for a few weeks trying to transfer some out. OK, well, that's good to know. Um, I mean, I, uh, I so far so good with Gemini. I'm, I'm going to be opening up an account there for the institutional uh, account because Coinbase. Just, oh, and then and sorry to vent, but then then in the fine print, after I went through all of this uploading forms, got an obscure email saying, oh, just a reminder, there's a thousand dollar processing fee. Never mentioned that before. So am I hating on Coinbase a little bit? Yeah, yeah, I am. I don't I don't like them. I don't recommend them, but they do have a wide selection of coins, sort of the lesser of two evils. Anyway, uh, rant over everybody. Thanks for showing up. Thanks, everybody. If you're watching the replay, please like and subscribe to these or you're watching a clip on the YouTubes. And uh, for God's sakes, if you don't have these, go to CryptoMastery.org slash pro. Uh, we have a lifetime offer that's going away or it's going up $500 soon. And uh, in the annual, we've, we've kind of basically bonused in all the old Crypto Mastery signals uh, that were worth doing. So anyway, um, got a little overlap here on the... Uh, the formatting but uh check this out you guys watch the videos 40 minutes you can go in here click on this little gear and go change the speed to like one and three quarters x and, and it'll get through real fast and uh you know otherwise otherwise it functions as a great sleep aid at, at regular speed okay thanks everybody i will see you tomorrow in m3 active trader again if you're not already in m m3 active trader go to moonstream.io and slash m3 and you can read all about that if you like this class we go even deeper and tomorrow's class you can read all about this it includes the basic indicators uh, you get daily access to me in a live chat room we've got some really smart traders in there giving some great alpha and uh sharing that so it's a great community that's that m3 active trader it's monthly or quarterly uh, we do a weekly wednesday class where we dive deeper into the charts i do give trade recommendations on a regular basis i'm in there daily you have 24 7 access to me within reason even when i was in mexico for a few weeks i was checking in daily on the mobile phone there's a members area with some trainings you get other bonuses uh, the our m3 is our highest level for doing uh, active trading and so uh, if you like these free classes then uh, be sure and sign up for m3 active trader and learn more about that uh, here all right guys uh